I'm gonna try with everything that I have to survive for 100 days on this deserted island. I have nothing but a few trees and this small piece of land. This is gonna be difficult. Did I mention it's on hardcore mode as well, so if I die, I lose the entire world and all my progress. Episode 1. The one where I don't die. I hope lol. So day one starts and I go straight for the tree, make a crafting table, pretty basic stuff. I try to get all my stone tools before nightfall, but apparently the only thing that exists here, and excuse my language, is freaking diorite. I actually do cuss a little. But I finally find stone, all is right with the world, and diorite can go to hell, a stranger. Yeah, strangers need help sometimes. Kids, go help a stranger. Just kidding, please don't do that. Oh my gosh. I'm off topic. Back to Minecraft. I get my stone tools and realize I gotta eat, so it's time to end some fishies. Don't mind me on my fish murdering spree. After I got tired of killing fish, I got some kelp. Then I made my starter home. I I know it's horrendous, please. I don't want to see any comments about how bad this house is, because I know. I know. I got some last minute resources before the sun set and then ran back into my house before mobs started spawning. Now that I'm stuck in my beautiful home for the night, I take this opportunity to organize my inventory and cook up my kelp. Then I remembered zombies can break through wooden doors, so why not use two wooden doors? Except for I gotta place it right. Oh, yeah, no, that's not it either. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. And... Big brain! Mining away. There are zero ores down here. There has to be another way. Oh my gosh, wait, I thought of another way. I have a door and I have a pickaxe. That should be all I need. Let's go get some iron. This is so much easier than strip mining, I highly recommend. That night I smelt all my iron and add windows to my house so that way I can see when it's safe to go outside because I'm not about to get surprised by a creeper. I decided to spend my precious iron on an axe, pair of boots, and a chest plate. Now it's the start of day three and I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I have some armor, I have a good weapon, but I do not have a bed. No sleep equals phantom spawning. So getting a bed as quick as possible is very important for me because I'm really bad at fighting phantoms. Since I can't get wool from sheep, I have to get wool from spider string. I built this platform so spiders can start spawning. Let's hope this works. I notice the first spider as I'm eating my fish, but I can't just rush over there because this skeleton pops up. And I don't have a shield, so I lured him into the water and killed him and he dropped two string, which was amazing. I just need ten more. Great. But I end up finding a second spider right after that, except for he's stupid and didn't give me any string, and then Phantom started spawning. So things are not going great right now. After this, things became a blur of killing spiders, killing phantoms, killing more spiders, killing even more phantoms, and then somewhere in the middle of it, I thought it'd be fun to upgrade my house to a real house, but I built this ugly, horrible building that's even worse than the original, so I, it, this, this housing issue is going to be a long process. At this point, I've been killing spiders for eight days straight, and I somehow still come up one string short. I am so exhausted, but I am determined to make this the last night that I look a phantom in the eyes. And then I finally notice the last spider I need. If this one doesn't drop any string, I'm gonna lose it. So I fight off all the phantoms, and I get the spider to come to me. And yep, you guessed it. Nothing. The sun was about to come up, and I was hopelessly looking around for just one more spider but it would never come. Not on this night, at least. It's day 13, I start restocking my food supply and preparing for tonight. I was dangerously close to rage quitting at this point. Nighttime finally comes and there's more phantoms than ever for some reason, so I hide out on my ugly roof and just watch waiting for a spider to spawn. Half the night goes by and then I finally spot them. So I rush down as fast as I can, I get what I need, and then I run. I can now finally make a bed and I don't ever have to touch another greasy phantom again. What did he say? Now I can finally make some progress on this island and the first order of business is demolishing this ugly house and building something totally new and actually pretty that I'm gonna completely copy from Pinterest this time. I'm done being creative. It doesn't work. I gather the wood I need and I choose something doable from Pinterest and I get straight to building. My build won't look exactly like that because I don't have any bamboo and I also wanted to add a mining entrance to the side since there was a mine there already from earlier. Once the building was done it was time to decorate the inside and move all of my chests over. Honestly, I'm pretty proud of this. It may not be amazing, but I've definitely built worse. Now that I have a real home it's time to improve on the rest of the island. First I looked into making lanterns because they're prettier than torches, but I'm way too poor for that. 
Even though I've been on this island for 20 days, I still don't have a solid food source, so building a farm is definitely at the top of my list. Before I can build anything though, I need to get rid of all the trees and flatten the entire island. I end up using up all of day 21 just flattening my island, but it's super satisfying, so no regrets. Look at me go, busy in her terraforming ASMR era. It's so satisfying. The first thing that I built was this cute little boat dock. Just in case I find any zombie villagers, I can trap them in a boat, hide them under here, away from the sun, until I can cure them. Now it's time to build the garden. I'm thinking of doing about three different wooden squares of different crops. So far, I only have wheat and potatoes, but I'll probably just fill in that last cube with something random. I got the first box pretty much done, so let's fill it with the five potatoes that I have so far and hopefully grow some more and fill up the whole thing. Now I do the same thing for the wheat bin. I strip all the wood, hoe all the dirt, and again, I don't have enough wheat seeds, but it's a start. We're gonna fill this thing up eventually and have a great food source. Eventually I get bored of gardening and decide to go fishing because who knows what you might catch, but then I only caught a cod and a puffer fish before I got bored of fishing as well and went back to gardening. I use my extra saplings to make some bone meal to maybe speed up my gardening process just a little bit. Cause you know, I'm big brain like that. Day 26 I wake up and it is beautiful outside. I spot a rainbow out of nowhere which I had no idea my shaders even did. So I just kind of take a second to appreciate all I've done. I'm not going to rush around. I'm not going to be stressed. I'm going to appreciate that it's not raining. Appreciate it's not nighttime. There are no phantoms. Nothing can hurt me. And I'm, I'm content. Just kidding. I'm not stranded on this island for 100 days to be comfortable. That's not the point of this challenge. I'm here to make progress. So I'm going to murder all this kelp and we're going to put it in the composter and get bone meal and I'm gonna fill up that garden and today is gonna be so productive. I can feel it. Since I already have a wooden platform for mobs to spawn, I'm gonna go ahead and flatten my sister island over here and turn it into a tree farm. Since I'm gonna be mob proofing this island, I deem it safe to build a bridge so that way I have a much easier access. I don't have to go swimming every time I want to get over there. The only thing is I'm really bad at building bridges so hopefully this turns out cute. Halfway through building the bridge, I decide to work on the tree farm again instead. Can you tell I have ADHD? Oh my goodness. Anyway, this is where I'm going to put all of my oak saplings, and I'm going to do the same thing for birch, but on the other side of this island. While I was admiring my new tree farm, I noticed a turtle, and so of course I had to go and get a butt ton of seagrass and become the turtle queen. After this, more turtles started showing up, so I became their queen as well. That's just- this is- this is what we do. Um, I don't really know much about turtle procreation, but this guy became a dirt fountain, so I'm assuming that's a good sign. I also thought that they would like to lay their eggs in a hole, so I kept digging holes, but apparently I'm pretty sure that does nothing. This guy also became a dirt fountain. I don't know what this means. Somebody help me in the comments. I could also google this, but I just won't. Anyway, he finally laid an egg. I don't know how the eggs work either, so I just left and went back to gardening because I know more about that and turtles are scary. The morning of day 29, I notice a wandering trader. I check to see if he has anything good, but I don't really think any of these are good, so I just ignore him. And then I remember that I got too caught up with the turtles and forgot to finish building this bridge, so we're gonna be doing that today. And then I get sidetracked again and decide to organize my chests, but they look really cute now, so I'm honestly not mad. Anyway, I finished the bridge and it took like two seconds and I think it's super cute and simple. Then I add a final box to my garden. I still don't have no idea what I'm gonna be putting in it, but that's okay. I do some final touches on my garden. I farm some potatoes and I use all of my extra seeds to put in my third garden bin. This has been the final night of part one. If y'all would like to see a part two, let me know because this took a really long time to film. So I have already survived 30 days on this island, but all of that progress is nothing compared to what you're about to see in this video. Welcome to Minecraft Hardcore, 100 days on a deserted island. When I had started, I had absolutely nothing, and I can only use what's provided by this island, and nothing more. So I'm hoping and praying that there's diamonds down here, because I still only have stone tools. After some digging, I found them, and while I'm this deep, I'm gonna go ahead and find a lava pool, because I told y'all I'd be going to the nether soon, and I need obsidian to do that. I'm fully expecting to die in the nether, by the way. Anyway, enjoy this obsidian ASMR. Oh my gosh, that sounds literally my favorite. On my way back up, I grab some andesite because I'm going to use this to make a gorgeous nether portal. 
Usually I'll just make the portal over my lava pool, but this time I'm gonna be extra because I can and also because it'll look awesome with the cinematic shots later. I'm pretty nervous about going into the nether because I'm horrible at fighting things and this is a hardcore world. For those who don't know, hardcore Minecraft means that I only get one life and if I lose it, then I don't respawn and everything is lost. But oh well, I'm just gonna sneaky eat this potato and then off to the nether, hopefully I do not die. Before I go into the nether, I just wanted to ask you right now to please subscribe. This took about 13 hours of filming alone, and that's not even including the time that it takes to edit this video. I've worked so hard on this for y'all, so I really hope you enjoy it. I know I've loved making it. Anyway, subscribe. Let's go to the nether. So far, my Peter Tingle is not sensing any danger, but I do have the awareness of a rock, so we will see. I stumbled across this silly little guy who wanted all my gold, so I just gave it to him. After I had scouted out the area enough, I head back to the overworld to prepare all the things I'll need to find the nether fortress. I want to have two zombie villagers ready to be cured by the time I get back from the nether, so I'm going to go ahead and get them now. I have this area where monsters can spawn since my island is spawn-proofed. I tower up so things can start spawning and almost right away I see a zombie villager. He's a little hard to see but he's right next to the spider that's closest to me. Unfortunately, he fell in the water so now I gotta build a staircase and lure him up with my beautiful self as bait. I don't know why he wants me so bad. Just to add another obstacle, I didn't realize sitting in the boat with him would damage me. He's literally so ungrateful I'm trying to save his life right now. Now that he's safe, I gotta wait for the next night to get a second one, so I did some mining and cooked some taters to pass the time. Time to grab that second villager, you know the process, I tower up again, and once again, he immediately spawns. I don't know how I'm getting such good luck with this. This time, it was a little bit harder to get down because he is right next to a creeper, which will explode and kill him if I get too close. The creeper did end up damaging him a little bit, but he's alive and it's fine. Now that that's all done, it's time for me to gear up and go to the nether for real this time. We are about to find the nether fortress and I'm gonna most likely die. The reason I needed those villagers so bad is because when I go to the nether, I can get the supplies to cure them and after that I can trade with them. And that's a great way to get supplies whenever I'm on this island where there isn't a whole lot of resources. Here's my inventory set up, I got it all finalized and it's time to go into the nether. I'm gonna sneaky eat a potato again for good luck. And here we go. The first thing I found was some brown mushrooms, which is amazing because I need these to cure my zombie villagers. I also found this enderman, which is always useful, but I have not yet found the nether fortress. And then finally, while I was tunneling, I noticed on my subtitles that there were blazes nearby. I totally didn't look up a seed map and was tunneling right towards their coordinates. It's a miracle, guys. Crazy, right? Oh my gosh. After recovering from my shock of just randomly stumbling across these guys, I had to prepare for battle. Why are you running? After that, battle of sorts, whatever you want to call that. I got all the ender pearls I'll need for the end, and I also grabbed some gold so I can cure my villagers, because the first time I was here I gave literally every single gold I had to that silly little guy. I don't know why I did that. Finally leaving the nether, I am never coming back here on this world, goodbye. I never thought I would be so relieved to be back on this crappy little island, but I'm here and I'm happy, so I empty all my nether stuff into a chest, and now I get started on curing my villagers, but I don't have enough gold, so I literally already have to go back to the nether. I thought I was gonna swear this off and be done with it. <sighs> I'm gonna cry. I zoomy speed, mine all of the gold I need, and I craft the apple while I'm here so that way I know I have enough gold. And then I carefully make sure I didn't anger anyone and make a run for it. Now that I have the golden apples, it's time to craft the potions. So first I need a fermented spider eye, and then I put it into the brewing stand. I now have a potion of weakness, but zombies don't know how to drink this because they're stupid. So I need to turn it into a splash potion of weakness so I can just throw it at them. 
I launch this bad Larry at him, feed him an apple, then you repeat the process. And after this, you have to wait for like an eternity, but you don't want to leave their side while they're in this process. I don't know why, but that's just what every tutorial has told me to not leave them while they're transforming. But finally, they both transform and I can start breeding them and have a whole villager farm and I'm so happy. First, I test out the waters to make sure he's actually cured. I slowly let him into the sun and he is fine. He is not on fire. So I'm gonna let him tan over here for a while while I build his new home. It's gonna be gorgeous. Y'all aren't even prepared. I'm using Minecraft hacks now. I set up this little contraption that I found online and it gives you infinite string, which is incredible because now that I have villagers, this basically equals infinite emeralds. So I can get anything that I want from the villagers now. Their home is officially set up, but first I have to test it out and pretend to be a villager that's trying to escape and have freedom. So far, I don't see any way that they can escape. So I'm gonna go ahead and let them into their new home. I can't start breeding them until they wake up, so I'm gonna go ahead and sleep, and this will also help phantoms not spawn because y'all know how much I hate those guys from the first video. So first I feed them bread, and then hopefully they'll have a kid, and now this guy gets to have a job. I now have two fishing villagers to trade string with, and the last resource farm I'm gonna need is an iron farm, so get ready for a gorgeous cinematic of me building it for like 20 days straight, I don't even know how long it took. Oh my gosh, this project took forever though. It is now day 83 by the time I'm done with it and it makes for a gorgeous view from my balcony. Also an update from the last video on my garden, it is going great and it is completely full. I'm going to use the rest of day 83 to continue trading with my villagers and breeding them. My goal for these villagers is to get completely enchanted diamond armor and tools. So this could take a while and it's going to be a lot of work, but ultimately I think this is the safest way for me to fight the ender dragon is, is just to have fully enchanted stuff. Like, I'm so bad at fighting, I'm gonna need fully enchanted things. You know how I said I was done with the nether? Well, the nether wasn't done with me because this guy came to visit and scared the crap out of me. But he seemed harmless, so I'm just gonna let him be. It's probably fine. I'm gathering sugarcane right now so I can start making paper so I can trade books with the villagers. Every time I place down this lectern, he has a chance for a new book trade. And this time I got mending, which is great because that means I can repair all of my tools as they get damaged. First I need emeralds though, so I go to my fishermen people and I give them all of my string to get as many emeralds as I possibly can. And now's the time for me to have the epiphany that I have built all of this from almost absolutely nothing. Like it, this was just a bunch of dirt and trees. How, how did I get here? Like this is actually really cool, I'm proud of myself. Anyway, at some point I realized that the iron golems weren't spawning anymore so there's an iron golem trapped in here somewhere in the wrong spot. So. I'm gonna try to fix this. The zombie's still here, he hasn't despawned. The villagers are still here. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And then I notice he's literally stuck in the roof. I love having this iron farm, but it's very dangerous to troubleshoot with because I'm one tap away from this iron golem from dying. Like they're so ridiculously strong. So you'll see me being very, very careful here to not get too close to him where he can whack me. I just wanna be able to hit him and not the other way around. Anyway, I finally got it working though, so now it's time to go finish trading with my villagers and get fully enchanted tools. I got this mending book just in time because my diamond axe was hanging on by a thread. So the way this works is when I get experience, it's gonna start mending my tools for me. And also my armor, this works on armor as well, I didn't mention that before. Sorry if me explaining all of this is getting annoying, but I know there's a few people out there who don't know how all this works, so... That used to be me, and I used to get annoyed when people didn't explain it, so I'm just gonna over-explain things, it's fine, deal with it. I don't know if every single cleric villager gets an enderpearl trade when they become an expert, but either way, I'm very happy to have this, that's so useful, what the heck. 
Using those trades, I now have enough ender pearls to craft all of the eyes of ender that I will need to go to the end. It may seem like I have an absurd amount of blaze powder and blaze rods, but I knew myself and I knew I would run out and I did not want to have to go back to the nether to get more. Like, that's the last thing I want to do, so don't judge. I've been making good progress on my villager farm. These all take a really long time to set up, but I still want to have about four or five more librarian villagers to trade with. I'm gonna need feather falling, I'm gonna need protection, whatever, I don't know the highest protection level, I think it's four, I could be wrong about that. I need a lot more librarian villagers is the point of that though. This is my string farm setup. I updated it so that way I have hoppers and chests now so I don't have to sit there and collect them. I can have it running while I'm gone without having a crazy amount of lag. I finally got my protection four book trade with this guy. I maybe or maybe not had to google the roman numerals for it to make sure that said the number four, but it does, so let's go. I'm gonna have the best armor. After I made my chest plate, I realized I do not have enough diamonds for all of this stuff. But I did some googling and I figured out that if I give this villager a specific job, he can be an armorer and I can get full diamond armor from him. The only slightly annoying thing though is I have to level him up and to do that I have to trade with him. So. I'm basically just gonna have an entire inventory full of iron helmets by the time he gives me the right trade. Finally, this goofy little goober gave me the diamond armor that I need, and it's already kind of enchanted a little bit, so that's pretty cool, I didn't realize that was a thing. I only have 10 days left in this challenge, and I'm starting to get a little bit worried I won't make it to the end before the 10 days are up. I had been practicing fighting the ender dragon because I'm very inexperienced with it, and the thing that kills me almost every single time is taking fall damage because the dragon can hit you and it throws you up into the air and I'm so bad at water MLGs. So I'm gonna put feather falling on my boots, I'm gonna try to get slow falling potions if I can, but I'm nervous about this fight. My armor's starting to get pretty decent. I'm okay with the amount of enchantments I have on them, but I'm getting a little bit tired of trading with the villagers. It's taking too long and I need something faster so I can beat the ender dragon in time. So I made an enchanting table. It's it's not the best because everything is random that it gives me, but I ended up getting a punch 2 book, so I can put that on my bow, and that's one of the enchantments I was looking for. I go ahead and enchant my bow, so now it will have punch 2 and infinity on it. Sorry if I'm talking about enchantments too much, but this one's my favorite. If you have the infinity enchantment on your bow, that means you only need one arrow in your inventory and you'll never run out. As somebody who hates PvP and is really bad at it, I only use bows to fight stuff. So I've actually gotten pretty good at using a bow. Like, I would say I'm pretty decent. I have officially stalled long enough. It's time for me to go and fight the Ender Dragon. I am organizing my inventory, doing all the last minute final touches that I need to do before I leave. My game plan is to kill the dragon as fast as possible because like I said before, the way I usually die is from fall damage. So I wanna give the dragon as little opportunity to knock me in the air as possible. I'm gonna make like 30 beds and just try to explode that bad Larry as quickly as I can and get out of there. And yeah, that's my strategy. Hopefully it works. If not, I'm probably just gonna die, but whatever. I, I'm pretty proud of what I've done. I feel like I've done well in this challenge even if I don't technically succeed in it. This will be my first time leaving the island. I'm throwing my first Eye of Ender to see which direction I'm supposed to go in. These each have one in four odds of breaking when I throw them, and of course my first one broke. Fantastic start to the journey, but it's okay. We're fine. We move on. It's gonna be fine. At this point, I'm practically on top of the stronghold because the next eye I throw goes straight into the ground. I gotta look and see where it comes up, and I'm gonna triple check with one more eye. This will be the last one I throw, just to make sure I'm in the right place. And yep, we are here. So I'm gonna start digging, and hopefully we will find the staircase very soon.
once I see that tile, I know that I have made it. We are officially in the stronghold. And I'm very nervous about dying here. I didn't go right into the staircase that I was supposed to, but either way, we're still here, so I guess it's fine. I still want to find the staircase, though, because in my research, I saw that the eye room won't be more than eight rooms away from where the staircase was. I don't know how true that is or if that's outdated information. Here's- I'm just gonna speed up me looking for the eye room because it took me forever. As I was exploring the stronghold, I kept hearing creepy whispers and they were saying something that sounded like subscribe. I don't know what that means, maybe y'all can interpret that. Normally I would skip through things like this because it's taking a while, but I really want to prove to y'all that I didn't cheat, at least on this part. I had explored pretty much all of the stronghold almost at this point, but I finally saw it. Right through the windows of this door, I saw the eye room, and we're actually about to go to the end. I am so nervous. I also lost two ender pearls, so hopefully I have enough for this portal. Oh my gosh, these silverfish are gonna be the death of me. What the heck? Die already? Thank you. This portal only came with one eye, so I barely had enough to fit it. But the important thing is, I had enough, so we are about to go to the end, and I'm gonna fight the ender dragon, and I will not die. We are manifesting that I will not die. Here we go. 